Hey, hey, everybody, this is Captain Yeet here for you for the Seaver and the Princess of Power episode review. This is going to be season four, episode four, titled Pulse. So let's get into it. So, this episode starts off with Spinnerella, Natasha, Bo, and Adore all tracking a transport ship because they said that in Trapta, well, not specifically in Trapta, but obviously they think it's in Trapta, but I say specifically Catra, that she's been making a new weapon for the Horde. And apparently, it's supposed to be powerful. And they see the transport ship going through the Whispering Woods. And the fact that they even come in here means that it has to be pretty powerful. So they ambush it. They go a few of the guards. They bust open the ship. And there's nothing inside of it. It was kind of stupid because Bo, he thought the new weapon was invisible. But no, Dora walks in at Sierra, swings her sword around. No, it's empty. What's going on? Why isn't there anything inside of this? Uh, I was going to say spaceship. Why isn't there anything inside of this ship? And then it turns out. It was an ambush. A ton of bots come from all around them, and they have to fight. Then we get to the opening. I just find the opening so funny because at the very beginning, when Bo, Glimmer, and Adora all like hug each other before we get everybody else, Glimmer has their like OG design when she's short. Then at the very end of it, when they all come back together to do that big wide team shot, she has a new design. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you know it's breaking like more like yo time travel like you know it's not like she's a kid, but I just found that funny. Anyway, we cut back over to them in Bright Moon, and everybody's pretty banged up after they get ambushed. Glimmer is beating herself up because she goes, you know, this keeps happening over and over and over again. No matter what mission I see you guys on, the horde is like two steps ahead, always ambushing you guys. I'm here chilling in Bright Moon in the castle, but you guys are going out there and getting hurt. You know, obviously she'll feel some type of way. Obviously Ador, Bo, Spinnerella, Natasha, everybody's saying it's no big deal, they're fine. And um, Swift win. He comes in kind of annoying everybody because he walks into like they're in a tent and actually in the war room so they're in a tent and swift wind goes Did anybody call for swift wind but he can't get through the door so he has to like cut it with his horn and they're like yo nobody called your name <laughs> why are you here he said that he went uh he backtracked the same way that the that the I don't know what to call it. I guess a cargo ship. Yeah, that's what I call it. But he, he backtracked the way the cargo ship came. And he found some horde stuff in the mountains. So maybe that's where they're hiding a new horde weapon. So everybody's like, okay, let's go. Spinnerella doesn't really want Natasha going. Because her arm got pretty banged up in the last fight. But Natasha says that she killed two more bots than her. So she's just jealous because she's winning. Spinnerella's like, nobody's jealous. Your arm is banged up. I'm not competing with you. What are you talking about? So they start arguing. And Bo and Adora are like, hey, the faster we beat this weapon, the faster, you know, everybody can be safe. So come on, let's go. Let's make a plan and then we'll go to the mountain for Swift win. Yeah, Swift win. Then Glimmer walks outside the tent and she bumps into Flood Arena. And she tells Flood Arena that not everybody's going to go on this next mission. So it's okay. You don't have to go. And Flood Arena says that's okay. But as we know, Flood Arena, that's double trouble. We cut over the Double Trouble meeting. It's kind of funny because that's kind of the same. You ever watched Tangled? You remember how the tower was hidden behind? It was like a mountainside. And there was like this huge hole. And it was covered up by like this wall of leaves. It's like the exact same thing here. It's like a mountainside. And there's like a bunch of leaves covering a hole. And she's trying to walk into it. That's where like the secret horde base is. It's sort of like the same thing. I didn't realize that until I guess like saying it out loud looking at the TV. But she's going to she finna walk in there. And it's um, Catra that interrupts her. And she turns back into Double Trouble. And they're just talking. Double Trouble is just loves all the drama and emotion that's been happening at Bright Moon. Since she's been, you know, giving leaking information to the Horde. So they keep getting ambushed. And she just loves the, dr the thrill of all of this. Catra isn't really trying to talk about the thrill, the excitement. She just want to get junk done. So they go, look, what happened? Did they die? Of course they didn't die. What else information do you have for me? All work, no fun. It's like she's trying to get on point. She's not trying to joke around with Double Trouble. And Double Trouble really hates that. And she also keeps turning into other characters, joking around with Katra. Like she turn into Glimmer. She goes, oh, you mean this person? There's in a Glimmer. Sparkle, sparkle. Oh, my friends are hurt. <laughs> like she keeps thinking about everybody. And she's trying to get to them to make Katra laugh. But it doesn't really work. Anyway, Double Trouble tells them that, you know, they're sending another mission out to find a new weapon you've been working on in the mountains. Catra said that it doesn't really matter. They're not going to find a weapon. Even if they do, I mean, it's going to be kind of wraps for them. We cut over to Swift Wind, Bo, Flood Arena. Wait, no, sorry. Swift Wind, Bo, Spinarella, and it's Natasha. 
and they're in the mountains looking around. Oh no, sorry. Oh, I get ahead of myself. My bad. We cut over to them walking to the mountains, and then we cut over to Glimmer. She sees that nobody's around, and she just starts. She just starts to like shoot out magic. I see teleports her staff to her. Spongebob out some magical waves, teleport to the way, just having some fun, letting out some release. And Swift, not Swift when Shadow Weaver sees her and says, that's impressive. Glimmer teleports over to her. She goes, what are you doing? She goes, I'm tending to my garden. And yeah, she's been gardening for like the past like season. Glimmer's like, what? She says, when do you garden? She goes, hey, we have to keep our, we have to keep ourselves occupied, don't we? And looks at Glimmer holding a staff that says, so she was just, you know, doing that magic. She still reports it away. And she said that she'd never seen such raw magical talent and power since her father, King Micah. It's really impressive. Glimmer goes, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm the daughter of an angelic being and a really powerful sorcerer. I'll never be like that. And the Shadow Weaver goes, yes, you're right. You'll be better. And I don't remember, like, I guess because I'm rewatching this, for the rest of the series, I don't remember if they ever explained where in the heck um, Glimmer's mom came from. Because we never really see anybody that looks like her. And they bring up a multiple times that she's an angelic being. She's basically immortal. So I'm like, yo, where does she come from? <laughs> like, you know, unless it's like some deep cut c lore from back in the day or the comics that I don't know about. I'm like, yo, an angelic being that's basically immortal? Where in the world did Glimmer's mom come from? <laughs> you know, I, that, I just keep thinking about that. It's kind of wild. Anyway, um, she, she, like I said, Shadow Weaver says she'll be better and she'll be able to do great things. But, obviously, she doesn't really have a teacher, so all that talent is somewhat wasted. What kind of queen do you want to be? And she cuts out a rose and puts it in Glimmer's hair. And Glimmer goes, I'm going to be the kind of queen that doesn't take orders or advice from prisoners. And teleports away. Shadow Weaver's like, mm, okay, whatever. She goes back to her garden. Then we cut back over to them, uh, Bo, Spinnerella, Natasha, Swift, Wind, and Dora in the mountains. Eventually, they come across a new type of bot. And this new bot has, well, it looks just like a normal bot, but it has like a huge drill on the bottom of it. And it drills itself into the ground and stops moving. And they're like, um, is this the new weapon? Like, I mean, it looks like a normal bot with just a drill. And it doesn't look that big, so, I mean, I mean, what can this thing really do? <laughs> it's not moving at all, so they're kind of confused. Bo walks up to it and goes to expect it, but as soon as he does that, it starts to beep. Then it shoots out like a huge green pulse energy that blows everybody back. I mean, it was even strong enough to, I don't think it knocked out she door, but it does make her go, you know, oh, what the, what the heck just happened? Like, you know, it blew her back pretty far. And when she, like, comes to, she sees that Spinnerella is, like, standing right next to Bo, and he's passed out. He's still breathing, but he's pretty banged up. I mean, he was standing right next to this. I mean, what does he see this? You see how big that was? Like, my goodness. He was standing right next to the robot when it shot that off. So, he, he's, he's pretty banged up. He's not doing too good. We got back over to Bright Moon, and Glimmer is obviously very, very concerned for Bo. <laughs> your boy Bo um, Adora she heals him but he's still pretty banged up she said even with healing it's going to take some time for Bo to fully recover Glimmer starts to beat herself up even more as she's just chilling at the palace and not doing anything her friends keep getting hurt time and time again and no matter what they do the horde is always two steps ahead obviously Bo he comes to and <laughs> it's kind of funny because he goes did we win and Glimmer starts hugging him. He goes, ow, ow, okay. I don't feel like we win. <laughs> I don't think we won. Um, Bo starts to, you know, comfort Glimmer. Like, hey, it's not your fault. Everybody knows that you are needed here. You're the queen now. Like, you know, it's okay. She goes, no, that's no excuse. You got to keep getting hurt. Obviously, Adora is kind of confused. On, you know, Adora and Glimmer are confused on why they're able to stay two steps ahead of them. And a royal guard member that has the scar on her face that's been there since, like, season one. Glimmer goes, why do you think the Horde is always two steps ahead of us? And she goes, hmm, maybe my, maybe your majesty, maybe they're tracking Sira. And then Adora starts to beat herself up. And she goes, she needs to go back out there and kill that bot. Glimmer goes, it's too dangerous, but she goes, hey, the faster we kill that bot, the faster more people will be safe. So Adora walks out. 
And it turns out that guard was double trouble. Not from the season one that is an actual person, but at that moment, that was double trouble disguised as her. And nobody brought up the idea, like, how are they specifically tracking Sira? Like, nobody brings up maybe they're tracking her magic or maybe they're tracking the first one's tech. You know, like, they don't give any ideas. Like, you know, just saying that tracking a certain person or tracking us in general, oh, maybe we have a tracking device on us. No, but just see, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't come up like, wait, how are they tracking them? You know, like, they don't come up with an idea like that. I was, like, so confused. I mean, you got to keep the episode going, but still, like, nobody bringing up an idea how she could possibly be doing this. I, I don't know. We cut over to, um, that's Shadow Weaver, Double Trouble, calling in to catch her on, like, a tracker pad, and she transforms into Bo and Glimmer and Sira, just making fun of them. She goes, you should have saw their faces. You got Glimmer going, transforms into Glimmer. Oh, Bo, not my Bo. He turned in, then she turns into Bo. Oh, I'm so hurt. Oh. Like, she just keeps joking around, turning into them just to be funny, and actually makes Catcher laugh. And, um... She kind of glad that she sees Catra laughs because she could finally enjoy the um, the toxic nature and fun of war without just being all serious all the time. Because it was even, I forgot to say, but in the first conversation, uh, Catra was like, you know, this isn't fun. This is war. Double Trouble goes, hey, I mean, why can't it be both? <laughs> so, that's a double Trouble for you. <laughs> double Trouble tells her that, you know, Bo isn't dead. He was pretty banged up and he probably would have died, but, you know, see where I healed him. Nothing I can do right there. But they are going back out there to find that bot that hurt him. Cantor goes, you know, it doesn't really matter. Well, actually, we were going to move all these bots to the fright zone to tune them up. But if it's a takedown of Sira, we can stand for a delay. So let me set up an ambush with a ton of these bots I can shoot on these huge posts. I was going to say post grenades, but these huge magical posts. Well, not magic, just these huge, like, bombs. <laughs> Basically, my bombs. So, it cut over to Glimmer, going to Shadow Weaver. And Glimmer says that she knows Catra the best. So, she wants her to tell her exactly how Catra thinks, so she knows how to beat Catra. Because somehow, Catra is always two steps ahead. And I'm like, well, they don't know Catra and Hordak sort of teamed up, teamed up. So, some they just be saying it, Hordak. Number two, I'm like, yo. A door knew Catra her whole life. I didn't even ask a door. I mean, obviously, maybe Glimmer's thinking, well, a door hasn't come up with anything, and they keep messing up our plans, so maybe a door doesn't know Catra like that. I mean, she does be good, what I'm saying? Like, if a door hasn't said anything up until now, maybe she doesn't know. So let me ask Santa Weaver. Okay, that could make some more sense, but at the same time, like, maybe it's easier to ask a door first before going to Santa Weaver. Santa Weaver says that you don't need to think like Catra. You just need to use your magic, if you're willing to. All it takes is a few ingredients and a few spells. And she grabs one of her flowers and, like, crumbles it up into, like, a little bird bath. And as soon as it hits the water, some magical energy has to pulsate. Glimmer goes, what? You've been growing magical plants this whole time? This is ridiculous. What do those do? And the camera pans over and, Gl and Sun Weaver goes, those are daisies. They feel joyful, so I like to bring them here. Anyway, let's focus. <laughs> <You know? laughs> let's focus on this. Uh, there was one moment in the first conversation they had I forgot to bring up where Sada Weaver says, don't you remember the uh, magical energy that you felt when we infiltrated the horde to stop them from using the portal? Glenda goes, yeah, yeah, I did, but uh, I also remember you draining me. And Sada Weaver goes, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I really know what to say to that. But here's a really nice shot of Sada Weaver and Glimmer standing right next to the bird bath. And I just realized that there's like some vines coming up from the bottom on the ground and like swirling around. And there's somewhat more on the Saddle Weaver side and there's like one coming over the Glimmer side. Her sort of like affecting Glimmer. Not like infecting her, like turning her evil or putting a spell on her, but sort of bringing her over to her side, you know? Like, yeah, I don't know. This isn't really good. Anyway, she's so gonna teach Glimmer how to do a um, a finding spell or a location spell, a location spell to find her. So she puts a few more like flower ingredients in here, pours some sand on her hand, and gives it a glimmer. And when it goes in the glimmer hand, it starts to glow. Glimmer puts it inside the bird bath. When she does that, she helps Glimmer make like a rune inside the bird bath. And then she's able to think about what she wants, and boom, 
So you're able to instantly see Katra and the secret horde hideout that uh, Hodo and Tobo been going to. This is another really nice shot of um, Glimmer standing right next to her smiling and she's able to finally figure out how to do it. Well, Sadoriba has to specifically tell her how to make the room <laughs> inside of it. It was still pretty cool. So when they find it, they have to make a plan. So if they go tell a door, because the door is looking in the wrong spot, if they go tell a door exactly where to go, Captain's going to pick up on that and then move all the bots and they're never going to catch her. But if they let a door just go ahead and go into the ambush and they go after Catra now because she's not expecting an attack, they could surprise her and get the jump on her. And then Gilman's like, yeah, that could be smart, but that means I got to use a door as a decoy. I can put her in danger. So I don't even go, hey, those are your two options. You are the queen. You make the choice. But I mean, hey, it's whatever. Glimmer starts to think about it. And then we cut over to Spinnerella and Natasha standing next to the door. Adora says that she's not going to leave here until she's able to beat the bot. So they can just go ahead and go. Spinnerella says that no. Us princesses stick together. So we're going to be with you no matter what. Natasha goes, ah, Adora, she, look, look, look. she wants to stay to fight more bots because she knows she's losing. You're just as competitive as me. Spinnerella's Spinnerella, like, what are you talking about? This is a giant bot that can, like, shoot, like, you know, shoot out a huge post grenade that can blow us all back within a second. Nobody's as competitive as you. Yo, this is why nobody comes to our game nights anymore. Adora, tell her. Adora's like, yo, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get into this. And then Spinner, Natasha goes, no, nobody wants to come to our game nights because you serve vegetable platters. Who serves that? Nobody wants to eat a vegetable platter. While they're arguing, one of the robots come from the side and shows out a pulse. So they jump over the mountain and just run. They go, okay, we need to give a plan. But then there's three of them surrounding them. They're like, what? There's more? So they have to brace for impact because all of them are going off at the same time. Then we cut over to Katra. Yeah, yeah. We, well, actually, we cut over to Glimmer first. He's standing outside the hideout as he starts to charge up her hand. And a really cool shot. And Glimmer, I guess she, she was going to kill this episode because she shoots the two guards that were standing guard outside like the little hideout and let me get glimmer there we go uh, it's kind of too bright so you can't see it too well it looks kind of cool i'm not gonna front <laughs> it's kind of all bright it looks kind of cool so glimmer takes out the guards and walk in and Katha thought that was some double trouble at first so she just stands there and look and she goes what are you doing glimmer shoots out a beam she goes oh snap it's actually you she goes what would it be so while Glimmer and her are fighting, Glimmer usually shoots out like a magical ball of glitter energy or whatever. I don't know what it's called, but she shoots out like a ball of energy. That's how she normally fights. In this episode, she will like charge it up and shoot it out. And it was like a laser beam like from Cyclops. Like, yo, <laughs> this was like crazy. And she was like trying to attack, um, capture this. She was going to kill. Like, my goodness. So while they're arguing and fighting back and forth, Catra goes, oh, use Adora as bait. I, think you, I didn't think you had it in you. Glimmer goes, well, I guess you didn't know everything. Teleports in front of Catra and charges up a beam. And look at this. This is just like Cyclops beam. Look at this. Look at this. So it starts to cut through everything like a laser. She, was, she wasn't using like her normal attack. I'm like, yo, she was going to kill this episode. She went, look at that. It cut like butter. It was cut like butter. I want to cut Catra in half. My goodness. So while they're fighting, you know, this whole place is starting to come down because, you know, she's shooting off these lasers everywhere and it's blowing everything up. <laughs> so eventually, she's finally able to destroy Catra's whip because she whips Glimmer's hand because she got the whip from the Crimson Waste. And Glimmer grabs the whip and charges it up and it blows up. And Catra starts to run away. And Glimmer goes, oh, what's the matter, Catra? You're not afraid of sparkles, are you? Glimmer, I mean, not Glimmer. Catra runs around to a button and said that she was saving this for a special occasion, but now's a good time as any. So she clicks a button, and it's the exact same robot that, you know, Dwarven fighting actually shoot out that huge big pulse, but it's a gigantic version. And Catra says that this thing is so powerful, it can take out half of the Whispering Woods within one blast. So you gotta choose me or the bot. Glimmer's like, you know, uh, what should I do? I'm like, Glimmer, you can teleport. And she teleport over to her. And then, you know, grab her, teleport over the bot, shoot it up, and boom. I don't know why she's like, like teleporting is fast. I don't know why she's like thinking. Anyway, eventually, like a gurney from the from the ceiling falls and it traps Catra on the ground. Glimmer goes, hey, now I don't gotta choose. So she teleports over to the robot 
teleports it like you know 100 feet in the air it blows up before she's able to teleport back to get Katra, double trouble comes and saves her because she said that she heard that the queen was on a mission so she came in to check on Katra. she was right because she was in a pretty tough spot she's able to pick it off of Katra, and they run out so <laughs> they're good we cut back over to a doors group and natasha made like a huge net around them to block all the blast but it's given out she goes i don't know how long i can hold this glimmer comes in she goes hey you guys need any help and it winks and it takes out all the bots i'm like okay my girl glimmer going crazy <laughs> this was nice this was pretty dope i like this uh it's kind of too bright so you can't see it too well but it was still pretty cool though that was the coolest scene though i was like how does he do that he had like a trail behind her when she teleports as you can see she forgot one spinnerella was able to take it out but she got blown back and when Natasha went to go check on her, Spinnerella goes, 14. Natasha's like, what? What are you saying? Are you okay? That's 14 bots for me. I won. <laughs> so they just start laughing. Natasha kicks her on the head. I mean, sorry, kisses her on the head. Not kicks her in the head. <laughs> that is funny. Glamour teleports over to a door saying that, you know, hey, we won the day. Everything's all honky-dory. And she takes out that bot. Without them looking. Okay, I mean, come on. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That was pretty dope. So they go back to Bright Moon. Glimmer tells Bo exactly what happened. Now she took out all the bots by herself. Bo goes, hey, that sounds amazing. Yeah, and, you know, a little dangerous. Adora's a little mad because, well, she used her as a decoy. Glimmer says that she doesn't want to be on the sidelines anymore. She's not just going to chill here in a safe place while her friends are getting hurt. No more. She's going to be on the front lines with her best friends. And they're gonna win the day because of that. Things start to feel a little bit better. And then Glimmer just casually slips in that she's getting magical teaching lessons from Shadow Weaver. They're like, what? You can't be doing that. Glimmer goes, okay, well, I guess I'll go make some food for us and teleports away. <laughs> okay, Glimmer. I mean, Shadow Weaver is on our side as he does hate Hordak, so he does want to help us. But it's still Shadow Weaver. So we should probably keep an eye on them. Number two, I mean, I guess it was still pretty bad for her to use that as a decoy. But, I mean, I guess there was no other way because if they did send a door over there, character would have got away with the bots, and these bots are pretty powerful, so you need to destroy these bots. So, it's kind of an iffy situation with what just happened. Anyway, uh, we, the last scene of this episode is Catra and Double Trouble getting back to the fright zone. Uh, Catra thanks Double Trouble for coming to save her because he thought she probably would have died. If Double Trouble didn't come save her. And Glimmer, since he didn't go back to get Catra and the whole place fell apart, I guess he just thinks Catra died. I mean, I don't know. She doesn't really think that, but you know, in hindsight, she's probably like, yo. She like, she goes back to the hideout to go get, get her. Like, yo. He, he walks away. <laughs> like, she might have died in there. <laughs> That's all he wants to be thinking. I don't know. Anyway, Double Trouble goes, ah, oh, no problem. I'll always save you and help you out. For a price. Cat has to give us some money. And she goes, ah, oh, thank you. For your contribution. Put you in her pocket. And then Cat goes, you know, that was really surprising of Glimmer. I would have never thought she would have done that to a door. You know, tricked her and everything. They used her as a decoy. That was surprising. Now, at first I thought she was just going to think, oh, that's because Shadow Weaver is, like, edging her on. But no, she actually thinks, huh, maybe that friendship has a few cracks in it that they don't know about. Maybe those cracks can get bigger. If someone can manipulate them and set them up. And she looks at Double Trouble and she just smiles. And that's the end of the episode. So yeah, it was a pretty good episode. Uh, I liked it. <laughs> it was so funny though. A few of these scenes were pretty funny. And the next two episodes... Actually no, it's episode 7 of this season. And then beyond. That's when things have to go kind of crazy. But other than that, I kind of forgot the other three episodes. The two episodes I'm going to do. Honestly. But it doesn't matter. So, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all later. Thank you all for watching. I think all of them will be wonderful human beings, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right.